for, for those that don't know, I know that I've been around for a long time, many, many years, and I was a state rep back in, uh, during Engler's first uh, term back in the, in the 90s, and uh, Public Act 51 was an issue then, and so nothing changes. <laughs> it's a lot of politics involved. Whenever you have uh, a divided uh, legislature, you're going to have those kind of things. But it's been talked about, as far as I know, for 30 years, nothing has changed. And it's not going to change until uh, you get a, a group of people all together to decide that that's going to change. And I know that, uh, the, and I'm a real realtor also, I've been a realtor for 35 years, sold a couple hundred million dollars for the real estate. And when they were building houses out in the western part of North, Northville, I had clients that said, oh gee, look how cheap I can get this big square footage house. Well, they were getting it cheap because it was near the dock. <laughs> And, and I refused to sell any of them. I said, no, I'm not going to sell it. Um, you know, I, I went to law school, and, and I understand, you know, uh, the hazardous waste issues, the Breckland uh, uh, laws. I said, you're going to get leaching coming in, uh, across there. I, and I refused to sell any houses in that area to any of my clients. Said, if you want to go over there and get what you think is a good deal, that's up to you. But I'm not going to be a part of it. You know? so, so people kind of buy into, as he was saying, the dump was already there notwithstanding the fact that they were uh, allegedly capping it and not, and not moving it. As far as the, the trash going from uh, other states and other, uh, con uh, other countries, Commerce Clause trumps everything. So that's in the federal law. Uh, tipping fees. You know, you can tipping fees, whatever, sure, whenever you raise tipping fees, well, guess what happens? Your, your waste is going to go up also, you know. And so, so tipping fees can raise, can stop people from coming in. But that means you're going to pay more too. So as long as you are happy doing that, that can be a solution. So so for every remedy, there's a consequence always. But listen, I, I really want to thank everybody for being here, and I want to give a special thanks to all of you because many of you know that you know I've been suffering with cancer for for four years, and I want to thank you for all of your prayers. Concerned. So so battling away at it and still going strong. So. So thank you very much. We'll keep the prayers coming. Thank you. Um, you know, the legislature uh, ha has made some changes in election laws over the year, but the big change happened in 18 with a citizen-initiated uh, um, uh, ballot proposal where over 60% of the people in this township and community voted for it, and it made some sweeping changes in, in the election laws. And I kind of wanted to touch base on those things for you, kind of bring you up to date on them. So, so um, it was one of about three uh, proposals. But some of the main changes in the election law are you can now register to vote right up to the close of the poll. So if you walk into my office at 7.59.59 p.m., you can say, I want to register to vote register to vote and I give you a ballot and you have to you have to vote it there. You can't go someplace else. You can't take it with you. But that's a real major change. It used to be a 30-day limit. Now a lot of, uh, of people don't like that change. It's difficult, it's hard to administrate when you're trying to run the election on election day and you have people still coming in. That's the law, so we're dealing with it, but it doesn't make it it makes it difficult when you're trying to run an election on election day and you're still registering people uh, as they as they walk through the as they walk through the door. So you can register to vote right up to the last tenth of a second, hundred thousandths of a second. As long as you're in the uh, the clerk's office you can do that. We don't want to advertise that though. Well, it's the law. I mean, what, I, mean, I mean, we can tell them that they can <laughs> register up to the day of or yes. so, but we don't have to advertise it. So, so it, it makes it some administrative difficulties, and it causes us to have um, some more staff inside the office in order to do that. Uh, but that's the, the nature of the law, and so, um, you know, if more people are voting, that's good for, for, for our system, I think. But it does create some, some, some issues. Another change is the no reason absentee uh, ballot proposal. Now, prior to this, you had to be over 60 or you had to have an articulable reason in order to get an absentee ballot. You had to say, I'm going to be out of town, uh, I'm working at the polls, so I can't vote because I'm working at the polls, uh, I'm in the hospital.
hospital, I'm in prison, or <laughs> I'm a, um, you know, I, I have a job like a police officer or fireman, I can't, I can't be there on that day. You had an articulable reason to get an absentee ballot. Now, you can get an absentee ballot for no reason. So you can, you can call, uh, you can um, ask for an absentee ballot, you can send us an email, you can write us a letter, you can do any kind of uh, a way of communicating with us to say that you want to be, uh, have, be an absentee ballot uh, uh, person. As long as you're registered, you know, we, can, we can send you a, an absentee ballot. We can also put you on what's called the permanent AV list. It's called, you say, why is it called AV? It's AB, absentee ballot, absentee voter. So it's called AV, so if you hear that, that's what they're talking about. And so you uh, can request to be on a permanent absentee ballot list. Uh, that does not mean that you get a ballot every time. It means you get an application. And that will be mailed to you every time. If you say, I want to be on the list, you can call me, you can write me, you can email me, and we will put you on the automatic list to where you will receive a, an application. You have to sign that application, requesting a ballot each and every time. And even though we sent that to you, doesn't mean you have to use it. Say I'm not going to go to the polls and, and vote, and, and and that's that's okay too. But um, we're expecting with this change to see a large number of people who traditionally go to the polls will be doing absentee absentee ballot voting. Um, and just as a, as an example, um, in 2016, the last presidential primary, for the total of that process. Uh, we sent out 3,300, uh, we had 3,300 absentee ballots. That's from beginning to end to the, to the, to the last day, the second that it comes into the, to the office. On Friday, we sent out over 3,500, and you still, have, still had a month to go. And so now we're up to about almost 3,700 um, uh, absentee ballot, uh, ballots that we sent out. Now, on top of that, I have about 1,000, 1,200 more absentee ballot request forms that are still out there. So we sent close to 5,000 of them out. And so those have not come back in yet. How many of them will come back in, I don't know, but I expect it to, to rise. Additionally, um, a lot of you probably remember in 2018 in the gubernatorial race. That gubernatorial race was the highest volume in the history of Michigan, both in terms of people going to the polls and going and, and, and requesting absentee ballots. We had more voters vote in the gubernatorial race in 2018 than we did in the presidential race in 2016. And traditionally, presidential races are higher. And what is the reason for that? Well, guess what? Everybody who is running for office they get kind of smart about how to contact people with Facebook, social media, Twitter, whatever. We, we, we get these uh, wonderful lists and we start trying to contact people. So what we're doing is going out there and stimulating the voters to come forward and get a ballot or go to the polls. And so you, you've got this increased way of communicating with people along with the mass media talking about it. The parties in general are, are have these wonderful lists. You notice how when you go to the uh, uh, to the polls today or you get an FC ballot, it's a presidential primary, you've got to pick a Republican or a Democrat ballot. Now you're not registered in Michigan. You don't register as a Republican Democrat, Democrat. But the legislature, those of us who've been around, said, wouldn't it be real neat if we made people pick one and that way we could get a list of who you are? And that information is foilable, and we find that information out, politicians do, and we start contacting you. And so because of the changes in, in, in the mass media, because of the changes in the way to communicate people, more people are voting. Now that's good, but it really puts a burden on clerks in all municipalities because we have to afford to buy more ballots, to pay more for mail, to have updated equipment and to have the people necessary to process all those things. So I want to talk a little bit about this presidential primary. And what I brought with me is a couple of the, the, the back samples of the ballots. I have a 
Democrat ballot. Now, the Democrat ballot has all the people who are running uh, for office in the, the Democrat Party. Now, a lot of these people have already dropped off, but they signed up at the, the appropriate time before, I think it was December 12th or something like that. So there's some people who are on this that are not no longer in the game. But anyway, that's on there along with the DIA um, um, renewal and also the bond issue that you heard uh, 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 other people talking about uh, on the back of it. On the Republican ballot, you have the president, you have three other people, two of which are not on, not running anymore, but they're still on there because they were, they were, they were signed up at the right time, and you have the DIA issue and the school bond issue. You can have a third choice. The third choice is, I don't care about politicians. I just want to vote on the issues. You can request a ballot that has just the DIA and the and the school on it. So we have three different ballots. What does that do? Well, it costs me more money to have all those three kind of ballots. And guess who has to guess who's going to pick what? I got to guess. I got to sit down and say, gee, how many people are going to pick this one? How many people are going to pick this one? And how many people are going to pick this one? So what I did was I bought a whole bunch of them, <laughs> of each of them, because I didn't want to run out. You heard about what happened uh, in, in 2018 in Oakland County where, where they ran out of ballots. And, and in that particular county, the, the county uh, clerk ordered all the ballots and they didn't get enough of them. As a matter of fact, uh, in this past um, uh, November, uh, Livonia was having a, a <coughs> solely on uh, their their council. So the, the mayor was running, not the clerk, not the uh, treasurer, because they were they run opposed, and the council. That was all that was on there. And they said, gee, you know, with all the changes in the laws, we better order more ballots. And they did. They ordered 30% more ballots. They needed 31%. <laughs> they, ran out of, they ran out of balance. So it's a big guessing game of what the turnout's going to be. And so what I did was I sat down and said, well, gee, what's going on? Let's see. We've got a, a bunch of Democrats running. It looks like this is not going to be resolved by the time it gets to Michigan. I'm probably going to have more people voting in that. I'm going to have some Republicans who are going to be playing in the Democrat Party voting for the person they think is the weakest part person, so I gotta account for that. And then I got people who are saying, well, I'm mad that someone's trying to, to, uh, to uh, impeach my president. I'm gonna vote for that where I normally wouldn't vote in this in, in, a, pres in a presidential primary because he's the incumbent. And then some people don't understand that third ballot. They look at the, they look at the, um, the uh, uh, application, which is right here, and I know most of you have seen this, this application, and it goes, well, I got to pick a Democrat, a Republican, or a nonpartisan one. Well, I'm going to fool Jerry. I don't want him to know that I'm that I'm going to vote for a Republican. I don't. It's none of his business. So I'm going to pick that one, only to find out there's no people on it. <laughs> and that's going to happen. And that's going to happen. Then they're going to call Jerry and say, there's no people on my, on my list. Send me another one. <laughs> and so, so the nonpartisan one is just strictly that. So, so we have a, 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 a job that we have to try to figure out what are the trends, what's going on in each one of the parties, what's going on in the state, what's going on locally. So we've got the DIA in the school. So we've got some people who say, gee, I want that, and you got some people I don't want that on each issue, and then we have to try to figure out how many people are gonna are going to are going to vote. And so it's a it's a lot of fun to sit down and try to figure out the math on that. But uh, <laughs> but anyway we, we do do that. Yes your question. What is the rationale of having a uh, the legislature in their infinite wisdom right. said the first yeah, it's not his fault. <laughs> They, they decided that we're going to have a presidential primary and you're going to have the Republican and the Democrat one. And that if there's any other issues, then it will be that one, that way. If there were no other issues, 
in this jurisdiction, there would, there'll be some jurisdictions with no third bathroom. But because we have someone, we have to offer that. Now, but you are with the other two. You have it on here, but I have to offer it just that. In their infinite wisdom, they said, this is the way we're going to do it. And it only, this only happens in presidential primaries. Or you may have a situation uh, uh, where all of a sudden, uh, let's say someone retires in the legislature or dies or is thrown in jail or something, and then there has to be a special election, and it happens to fall during this time, and that person could end up on, a, on another ballot. You know, or, or something could happen where, where uh, um, another issue that comes up for you know, roads or, or whatever local thing going on, and it was it's done where people said, I want to vote on this and I don't want to vote on this, and it's none of your business. Then I'm a Republican or a Democrat, so, so you have to kind of offer it. Uh, you know, on uh, concerns about getting a lot of the ballots in at the last minute, uh, are you or can you do anything to encourage uh, voters to send them in a little earlier? Uh, you know, really I, I, I would love that, but of course... Do you have a budget for that? Or well, well, I, mean, I, I'm, I'm just, I increased my budget 40% over the last time, and that's huge. I mean, uh, three, four $400,000 more, and I had to fight for that. Because I had to try to explain all these little things that I'm talking about uh, to, to my other board members and say, how am I supposed to know? How am I supposed to figure this out? On top of it, as you recall, we got new voting equipment back in 18. This was a federally and state mandated uh, situation where it was mostly paid for by the federal and state government to get this new equipment. I don't like this equipment. Um, the Slow. old equipment we had, there was nothing wrong with it. And she'll tell you about this. It only does three ballots a minute. Now, 63 out of the 83 counties bought this equipment. And it's done by the county. The county decides what kind of. And over in Washington County, they have a different uh, a voting equipment. Uh, but 63 out of the 83 counties bought this particular kind, and I understand why, because they were sold on, on security, and this uh, equipment actually takes a picture of both sides of the, of the ballot and, and, and captures it. It can read it forwards and back, back, backwards and down. But it was too slow, so when you've got this increase of, of absentee ballots, running, trying to run them through three ballots, a minute, and you get thousands of them, and you're there all night. The last, in 2018, I was there for 40 hours. So, so is any of that budget going to be used to encourage people to send those uh, absentee ballots in early? Well, I, I do it by communicating. Uh -huh. And then additionally, I bought, I had to go and spend another $70,000 and buy high-speed equipment. equipment yeah. that, 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 Jared? Yes. You can't open those until... No. Well, you can't open it. Now, the legislature, and, and thank you, I know you're working on it with uh, the people from the Senate, uh, on the Senate side, they're talking about us being able to start processing those AV ballots a few days ahead of time. Maybe opening them up, recording them, getting not, not running them through the tabulator, but getting them ready to, to run through the tabulator so that on election day we can get done at a reasonable time. I expect that by the time November gets here, we're going to be pretty close to probably 70% of the vote is going to be AV. And then as we progress on in the future, that's only going to increase. And then only us you know, conspiratorial minded people will go to the polls and say, I want to watch my ballot go through, <laughs> go through the machine myself. You know? how, how many, uh, it's none of your business calls that you got because I've got several of the people calling and asking me about it. I, I, I get calls every day. Why do I have to pick? I, it's nobody's business whether I'm a Republican or Democrat. I said, well, you're not being registered as one. However, this information is foilable, the Freedom of Information Act. Someone can, can get the fact that you got a Democrat ballot or a Republican ballot or a nonpartisan ballot. They don't know who you voted for. No one knows who you voted for. But they would be able to know that. And the, and the parties thought it was a good idea years ago to be able to try to capture that information to use for their personal benefit.
How are you communicating the new voting laws to people? Well, it's a good question. Now, we've been doing it through our newsletters, through newspapers. Uh, it's been in the press. Uh, and this was passed back in, in, uh, in uh, November of 18. So it's been, you know, a year and a half Newsletters that go to the house? Newsletters that go to the house, our e-news, it's been in the newspaper. You have to sign up for your news. You have to sign up for your news, but we them. mail you a yeah. newsletter automatically, quarterly. Is it on the website? It's on the website, you know. And so um, I believe that over time you're going to have probably upwards of probably 80% of the people doing it that way. Fine. You're really going to be technically a vote by mail uh, um, a jurisdiction, like some states are completely vote by mail. You know, uh, so. Um, and what is the plan? Uh, uh, should you run out? Do you have like a printer on call? That's, uh, well, here, here's yeah. something. Yeah, we have um, we have uh, handicap voting machines in every precinct. They print their own ballot. So when you go up to use it, it's a touch screen, and then there is a, a tactile uh, 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 device to use. There's a device that you can flow into for people that have different issues. But you can use it. Anybody can use it. It's a touch screen, and it will print a ballot. So we have paper in there. It will print the ballot. Then you take that ballot, and you run it through the tabulator. And that's how Livonia handled their running out of, of ballots. They used that handicap voting equipment to supplement. So you print it and give it to the voter who fell out of it. No, 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 it's printed right there. Oh, printed right there. It's printed right there. There's a printing, there's a, there's a printer so there. The voter uses it. The voter uses it and then it prints it up and it comes off on one of those, it doesn't right. say anything. It doesn't even look like it. You know the things you go up to, to, to Basically, you fill it out on a screen. Uh -huh. You ask, answer uh -huh. and, and vote and then, on the screen, and then, and then it prints out yeah. a sheet. But, but it doesn't print off the name. No. It does one of those square, what oh, they call. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. Uh, whatever the, the, the roof call. Yeah, yeah. And, and then it, and it's read by the by the machine. So, so it is but, fairly easy to use. The, the, but the goal is is to is to try to to estimate uh, the amount of that you're going to use the state. Uh, contacted us and said you should consider maybe 25 percent more of people are going to do it a, this time than last time. I ordered 50 percent, you know, just because I don't I don't want to I don't want to run. But that's cost that you know you, you, either the state or we have to investment. we have we have to eat. And so so also the state changed all of the uh, the material that we use. This. When, when you get a ballot, you're going to get this. Remember, it used to be the orange ones? They looked like this. They were all orange and they were bigger. So when you get your ballot, it's going to look like this. It's not junk mail. Don't throw it away. Okay? And then you'll mail it back in this, which used to be an orange one also. You'll mail it back in this. It takes a first class stamp. Uh, the older ones used to cost about 70 cents to mail back. This is, will be a first class. This is the secrecy sleeve. This is what you put the ballot into. And when you put it in there, you put it where the number is visible. Because when we open them up, and in, in when we're doing our, uh, our AV counting boards, we open it up and that's all we see. So the person records that, so that by the time it gets to the person, there's a line of people on a table, and there's four or five people there. By the time it gets over there, they don't know that Bob Smith turn this in how Bob Smith voted. So that person doesn't know. Like I may know this is Bob Smith's, but by the time I open it and I record the number, and then someone else comes over here and tears it off, and then someone else gives it to this person, and then they open it up and then feed it to the machine, they don't know it was Bob Smith that had that had that ballot. So it, so you really have secrecy in, in, uh, in ballot. But make sure you put it to where we can see the, uh, uh, the ballot. And then of course there's instructions given in all of them and to tell you to fill in the remember to fill in the oval next to your selection and uh, uh, then your then your, your ballot will count. In the A V counting boards when there's errors, um, people will still put an X over that. They'll circle it. <laughs> They'll do all kinds of things except for the machine won't count it. So we have to duplicate that ballot. And how that works is we have a Republican and a Democrat, 
at the table, and one calls off the, the, the voting and then fills in the circle. And we duplicate that, and we have to keep both of them, the original and the duplicated ballot to, to go through. So, so, so we, we and on a long ballot, it sometimes can take 10 minutes to duplicate you know, a ballot. So please tell all your friends, fill in the circle, don't put an X, don't put a circle around it, you know, because someone working in that room has to sit down and, and, and try to, uh, uh, to, to fill, fill those out. And so uh, really the main changes are you can register to vote right up to the last minute. Some of the other changes are minor changes. Used to be uh, we would mail ballots out to people at 4 o'clock on Saturday. Now it's 5 o'clock on Friday that we will stop uh, mailing them out. You can still come into the to the office and, and get one, but when you do the day before, you have to vote it there. You have to vote your, your ballot. You can't leave with it. And the same thing on, on election day, if you come in and register or you come in uh, for them, you have to you have to fill it out. You have to fill it out there. Uh, the um, you can still have emergency ballots. Like I say, if all of a sudden you've gone to the hospital, your your wife or your husband can come and say, hey, you know they're in the hospital, you know, and then up until 5 o'clock on, on, uh, on, on Saturday, we can get you, a, get you a ballot, or I can deliver the ballot to you. I've done it before where I've gone to the hospital with, with a ballot and have uh, uh, people have people vote it and return it. Uh, if you're in the, uh, in the household with someone, whether you live with them or you're married to them, or a brother or sister, uh, they, can, they can return these these applications for you, they can return your ballot, but nobody else can do that uh, unless they're an election official. So you can have someone that lives with you bring your ballot in, or uh, um, you know someone you're married to or related to in your household can bring it in. Otherwise, uh, uh, you know you, you, may, you can call and say, "Hey, I have nobody else to come and get my ballot, and we'll send someone to come and get your." How do you know that that person is actually a relative or? Well, well, you know, it, a lot of it is when you realize that what if they what if they take it, just take it to the post office, or they drop it off at the out front. We have that green box. What if they drop it there, yeah, they or they walk know. in and drop? Yeah, they I mean, you don't really know. I mean, that's just what the, the rule is, right. you know. And but, but we can, but when you when you do this, okay. you have to you have first to sign and say yeah. you, you're doing it for someone. Right. right. Well, and uh, first of all, I, I want to come back to these because. This is when you call or email or whatever and request a, a you know an absentee ballot. You will not be sent the ballot. You'll be sent this, which is a card that basically you have to fill out and say, "I want a ballot," and you have to choose which one of the three. You have to sign it. It's supposed to be signed the way we have your legal signature on the we, the we check township. when when you we when you send these in. Uh, we actually physically look at your signature. Right. If it's not there, we'll go to your old card. We still keep the old cards. And if it doesn't match, please put your email or your phone number. Right. And yeah. we will call you. Yeah. I, I probably make 20 calls a day saying, saying uh, you forgot to check something, or you didn't put your date of birth in, or something, right. or you gave, you, you wanted to send to, to Florida, but you didn't put all right. the information down, you know. And so we need to get a need to get a hold of you, but these we do are, check your signature. These are important, and I I did work on the yes. last election, and so that's why you know, um, and that email or phone number would be invaluable because if the phone number and the email are not there, uh, you know, we, so we have well we have to go to the to the cards again to check to see if we happen to have it there. If we don't have it there. Then I have to sit down. I have to type a letter, right. and so then we're a, a week out uh, again because it's got to go to you, come back to us, you know. So just you know, you can see that the errors can can mount up. Sure. But on top of another thing that came up with the last election, and again it was many of the candidates, in addition to our sending the township sending these out to you, okay. Um, a lot of the candidates were sending out cards, okay? Um, basically, nice little cards. And of course, then the people, everybody was confused. So, please, if you have any relatives or elderly neighbors, you know, they were confused. Well, um, 
Gosh, I think I sent it in, but I'm not sure, so I'm going to send it in again. There were sometimes we would get three different requests for the same person. Okay, all of that takes time because every you know essentially, uh, you know, I have to, we have to check. Okay, and so every one of those involved having to do a check, and so you know all of this adds money and costs. Yeah, it costs to it, and so it, it, it's it's very exciting to do all this yes, yeah. and to watch it work and and and, and, and to help people. I mean, this is your fundamental right, your First Amendment right. I mean, uh, it's it's a it's a the right to vote is an extension of your First Amendment free speech, and so it's, it's fundamental. It's it's important. It, it's always been very important to me, and so so uh, try to follow all that and, 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 and explain to people that we're not trying to find out who they are, or what they're doing, but it, it, they have to do that in order to in order to get about. But yes, when, whenever we get these things, we have to try to to discern what, what it is that you intended or, or, or wanted. Uh, so really the main changes, you can register any time, no reason to absentee, uh, absentee ballot, those are the big changes, and then some minor changes as far as when we mail out ballots and when you can, 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 uh, can get one. Uh, any questions, anything concerning elections or Good, we solved all the problems. <laughs> I, 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 was gonna say, I think one of the, act, another thing that slowed things down, I think at the precincts last uh, election, was people had trouble feeding their ballots through the machines. They, you know, not only the machines are slow. They, They're interactive. Someone thought it was a good idea to have an interactive uh, uh, machine. And, and like I say, my heart goes out to the, to the county clerks who had to decide what they were going to have all of us use, but but it, it would it would take your machine, take your ballot, and it would kind of be like, well, what's it doing? And some people would walk away, and it's going to kick it back because you've undervoted or overvoted. Undervoting means you left something blank, and it's going to come back to you. And then on the screen, it has something for you to do. It says, did you intend to do this? If not. You got to take the ballot back out, correct it, or if you say no, I didn't want to vote for that, then you have to push, you know, cast the ballot anyway. So it's kind of interactive, but it's slow and it takes time. And really, uh, uh, having people vote AV solves some of that problem. But still, when you're when you're going up there, uh, and, and remember, the people who are person. the people who are working at the polls are your neighbors, you know. Uh, they don't really care how you're voting and stuff like that. Uh, you know, be kind to those people too, because sometimes the lines get long, and, um, and they're there to they're there to help, and uh, and they really do a really good job and really good service. So so be kind and understanding to those those people too. So you're saying that while volume will probably will no doubt be up, that maybe the counting will compensate for that because of the absentee. Well, what what I'm planning, what I'm thinking is, is that more people are going to go to AV, right? right? Exactly. And maybe the lines will be smaller right. at the at the at the poll. Right. However, when you get elections to where you have this heightened, you know, animosity between the, the parties and stuff like that, you can still gin up a lot of people to come to the polls. A prime example, and I'm going to use Livonia again. They ended up with. 30% more, 31% more people using absentee ballots. They had another 20% more at the polls too, because you had a you had a hotly contested issue. So so even though even though sure boy look at all the people that voted this way, you still had people even more people coming to the polls for a light kind of of, 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 of election. So I'm expecting in November. This to be a very hotly contested uh, uh, campaign, and I think you're going to see all the records broken across the across the nation as far as his turnout and the way people vote, whether it's absentee or, or at the polls. Jerry, two, 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 one question and a comment. Uh, one, the comment is that people. This is this was one another thing that slowed the the, the in-person uh, ballots. You have to feed your own ballot. Yes. Legally, you have to feed your own ballot through the machine. Now, most of you probably here probably say, well, sure, I'm going to feed my own ballot. Well, uh, in past elections, 
um, <coughs> poll workers were allowed to help people, assist. And so then they were rather annoyed when in the last election we said, no, you have to feed your own ballot. The state law requires the person who's there to help you that takes the tab off and it receives your, your application. It's supposed to be 10 feet away. And so they would get frustrated. They would go up there, let me get that in there for me. And you have to feed your own ballot. And then when you have this interactive uh, piece of equipment, don't walk away from the, the ballot uh, 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 tabulator until you're sure your ballot is cast. Alexi, because that may come back saying an overvote means you voted for too many people. In a, like if you were to vote, try to vote for two people for the Democrat Party or two people, to, that's called an overvote. If you didn't vote for anyone, that's an undervote. Well, this machine will tell you both ways. Are you sure? Did you know that you overvoted? Didn't I have to give you another ballot if you want to, to yeah. do something? In the old days, it would just suck it in there and say, sorry, Charlie. <laughs> you know, but at least the lines weren't this long. It didn't take as long. So. How so, many high-speed um, tabulators? We bought two high-speed tabulators. Right. It cost thirty-five thousand dollars a piece. Jesus. And uh, but but with with the kind of equipment that we had, and with the number of people, a number of AVs that we had, with no reason AV voting, we're going to we're going to you know, break all the records in AV voting, and so it was. Uh, it was necessary, otherwise the people would have to be there for two, three days trying to count ballots. And, and the, um, you know that many of the people who help us out with these ballots are mature people like me. <laughs> and uh, after about 40 hours, I get kind of sleepy. You know, so. and, now, and now, even with the high-speed tabulators, um, yeah, you know they are high speed, but it's not like you can you can't feed different precincts, right? No, you feed one precinct, one precinct at, a time, at a time. At a so. time, so we have to, we have twelve precincts. We break them down, we put them in bundles of twenty five. We run them through twenty five at a time, and the, the, it just it's a faster feed, but right. still the, the larger the number of the votes, you still have all the other process that you have to have to do. That's why we're hopeful that the legislature will allow us to pre-process. Some of the um, some of the ballots, so that at seven o'clock on, on on election day, we can start feeding the machine as the opening, recording, checking, and we do that at at uh, in the in the accounting board because the application is with the ballot, and they're checking again. Okay, does this application belong with this ballot? So really, it's like being a a, a clerk at a bank. Everything has to balance. We balance every day. Every day, yep. our numbers have to balance, and so we we make sure that okay, I've issued 12 ballots to precinct three Republican ballots. Is that what I have on my list? Did that check out? And I do that for each and every precinct every day, and we balance so that when it comes time to counting, it's great. And then at the end, when they're all done counting, they have to balance. They go, oh, I had. You know, 2,000 pieces of uh, 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 ballots go through this machine. Wait a minute. I had 2,001. Right, and we got to look for that one. <laughs> I got to look for that ballot. What happened to that ballot? Did it, you know, did it get counted twice? What, what happened, you know, in, my, in the process? So, so it's a constant, uh, uh, like a bank teller balancing their, you can't go home until we find all the pennies. Um, <laughs> yes. Do you have enough election workers? Presently, we think we do, and uh, uh, we did a big, you know, blast out there to get plenty of people to help, and so we we increase the pay in order to get more people to come in. And, and, what, and, and the reality is, is the number of people that used to traditionally do this kind of work um, uh, uh, are mature people who are doing this work. Maybe a little extra money, but they're doing it, you know, as part of the, you know being a good citizen and stuff like that. But, you know, those kind of people age out, if I can say that, they get more mature, you know. And, and what we have found is people that are my age, which is like middle of the baby boomers, we're really less likely <coughs> to be volunteers than the group before us, the lead edge of the, oh, I'm going to go to the club, I'm, you know, I'm going to go to dinner, I'm going to go, well, I'm going to go sailing, or I'm going to go do something else. 
uh, especially in a, in a rather fluent uh, uh, community where you have money and disposable income, you get fewer volunteers. So we had to increase the pay to encourage some younger people to come in and, and to help out. And, uh, and so that happens. And if you look at all the service clubs, we start sending them out about six weeks before. No, I mean, say you, today you get a request for an absentee ballot. When does said absentee ballot? Well, uh, 24 hours. They want us to 24 hours of turnaround time. Um, and up until about 40 days before, we kind of collect them so that we can do a bulk mailing um, to cut, cut down cost. Otherwise, it costs me 65 cents to mail that to you. Bulk mailing, I can do it for about 35 cents. So I tried to mail, like I, like I mailed out a week ago or so, 3,500 of them at half the price. So, but at, at that 40 day period, I gotta start, if someone comes into the office, I gotta give them a ballot. Or, I can, or someone gives me a, I got I gotta process it and get it. So if you received it today, we're within that. 24, yeah, 24 hours is the turnaround. So we get it, we process it, we get it and drop it, drop it in the mail. And the rest of the time is U.S. mail. It's U.S. mail, whatever they're, whatever they're, they're doing with it. Uh, uh, military and overseas ballots, the law is required that, for, especially military, you have to mail them out about 45 days before the election. And that's a that's a federal law, and so now we can do that by email. They still have to mail it back to us. It's funny thing. They have to mail it back to us, but we have to make sure that we have all those uh, um, the acronyms you know, uniform and blah, 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 something. And we have to have those out 45 days before. But if someone like my daughter is in in uh, is uh, just finished going to Cambridge. Working on her master's, she sent a Unicaba request saying, "I want a ballot sent to to England." And so we emailed her the ballot, but then she's got to she's got to mail it back. And you don't want to wait too long to do that on her end, because last time she was she was where was she? She was she was she overseas. Was the same place. Yeah, she was in she was in Cambridge, and. Uh, and we got it on the, the last day, and she mailed it like two weeks before. We had a FedEx or the past one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did it snail mail, and we got it on the last day, the last possible day. So, so. thank you very much. Really appreciate everybody. Thank you very much. And, and you know where Jer Jerry's office, in case you come up with more questions. Yes, yeah, just give us a call. And Matt, Matt too. And Matt, too. Uh, I want to tell you, I think our, our next meeting is scheduled for March 11th, and um, we're going to have someone here from the county to talk to you about the, um, about the census. So, you know, it, it